Hello. So on YouTube, you can find plenty of such um, so-called gun fail compilations. So do you know what's happening? Recoil, right? Ah, but that's a layman's answer. Huh? So you are an A-level student, you need to have a deeper understanding than that. So this is about something called the principle of conservation of momentum, also called PCOM. And PCOM is kind of related to Newton's third law. Suppose we have two masses here, and suppose that this mass is exerting a rightward force on the other mass. Newton's third law says that this guy cannot push this guy without this guy pushing this guy back, right? So definitely, this guy must be exerting a leftward force on this mass. And we know that these two forces are equal in magnitude, just opposite in directions. That means uh, the two masses are also exerting equal but opposite impulses on each other. But impulse is supposed to change in momentum, right? So the momentum change of this guy and the momentum of change of this guy are also equal but opposite. So because of these two forces, this guy's momentum is going to change leftward, this guy's momentum is going to change rightward, but as a whole, together, the total momentum of these two masses is constant because they have equal but opposite changes in momentum. We can have more than two masses, yeah? Let's say we have all these masses here. Let's say we have these two masses repelling each other, these two masses attracting each other, these two masses attracting each other. So if I collect these four masses together and call it my system, do you think the total momentum of my system can be changed by these three uh, pairs of action-reaction pairs? No, right? Because all these action-reaction pairs will only produce uh, momentum changes that are equal but opposite in directions. So the lingo is this, we say the total momentum of this system is conserved. Conserved meaning the total momentum is constant and cannot be changed. Now what if I have these two masses also attracting each other? Do you think the total momentum of my system is conserved? So the answer is no, right? Because this force here is now what is called an external force. Because its action-reaction body is outside my system. So when an external force acts on your system, then the total momentum of your system is not conserved. Unless you include this mass as well in your system. So you expanded the system to include the, that fifth mass there as well. Then these two forces are now an uh, action-reaction pair. So if you have the complete pair in your system, then there's no external force. Now the total momentum of this system is conserved. The gun and bullet scenario is probably the most spectacular demonstration of uh, PCOM. So before the gun leaves the bullet, the total momentum of the gun and bullet system is zero, right? And then boom! When the bullet is fired, then the bullet has a rightward momentum and the gun has a leftward momentum. And these two momentum are equal but opposite in direction. How do we know that? Because when you fire the bullet, all that's happening is the gun pushing the bullet rightward and the bullet pushing the gun leftward. So these are action-reaction pair. There's no external force acting on my gun bullet system. So the total momentum must be conserved. But the total momentum started out as zero and therefore it must remain as zero. So to remain as zero, these two momentums must be equal but opposite. So the total momentum are equal but opposite, but the speeds of the bullet and the gun are different, yeah? Why is that so? Ah, just do the PCOM, yeah? So what is written here is the total momentum before and the total momentum after. So initial and final momentum. The total momentum before is of course zero because both the bullet and gun were stationary. On the other side, M1, V1 will be the momentum of the gun. There's a negative sign here because uh, the velocity I assume will be leftward and I'm taking rightward to be positive. M2, V2 is the uh, momentum of the bullet. So rearrange the thing. So we got M1, V1 is M2, V2. Rearrange again. So V1, which is the recoil speed of the gun, is M2 over M1 times V2. V2 is the speed of the bullet. Um, usually M2 over M1 is a small fraction because you expect the the gun to be maybe at least 30 40 times the mass of the bullet but then you know the bullet speed is supersonic yeah 
So even a small fraction of it is, is quite a large uh, recoil speed. So the bullet goes at supersonic speed, but the gun uh, recoils uh, at a slower but still very significant speed. That's why you need a proper posture and techniques to fire the gun. If not, you become one of those failed compilations. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!